Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where I disappear for three months and then come back begging for forgiveness with a new pattern. I am here today to give you a requested pattern from my last pattern that I posted. I asked you guys if you wanted to see the mama version of this little seal and I am bringing it to you today so you can make the mama version and the baby version or the papa version or the whatever you want version of these seals. I think they're super adorable and I hope you really like them. So a couple of things before we start, this is using a super bulky yarn, so it's a size six yarn. You can upsize and make it like a size seven yarn and use a bigger hook, or you can size down and use a, a size four yarn and use a 3.0 millimeter hook. You should get about the same thing. Um, it'll just be smaller or bigger depending on the yarn and hook that you use. If you use a bigger yarn, it gets bigger. If you use a smaller yarn, it gets smaller. The next thing about this pattern is that I am working in continuous rounds. So I don't end the round in any way. It just literally keeps going. We don't chain it together. We don't like, sorry, we don't slip stitch it together and then make a chain and then work the other round. You're literally just working in continuous rounds. Um, and then the stitch that I use is mostly, this is pretty much only using like a one stitch except for like the tail area here. Um, we are using the single crochet, but the version that we're using is the yarn under yarn under version. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically just the way that we treat the yarn. Instead of going over the hook, we're going under the hook. I do have a video on that. If you want to check that out and understand what the difference is and how it looks, um, you can use the traditional yarn over yarn over if you want. It might just turn out a little bit different and your stitches might shift a little bit. Uh, but it should all work out the same. So the other thing is is that this is a beginner pattern. I think I Don't teach the stitches necessarily. I try and break it down into what they are But I don't make it like this is the first time I've ever crocheted and I don't know how to hold a hook And I have never crocheted before and I'm trying to do this thing um, That's not where we're at. We're like we're at like a I've crocheted before, but I still need a little bit of help along the way. I'm still a beginner. I'm still figuring things out. That's where we are for this pattern. Um, be kind to me. This is the first time um, I've filmed anything in a very long time. I had to take a little bit of a break. Um, again, <laughs> oops. Um, I had to take a little bit of a break again, just uh, you know, to catch myself before I let my mental health go entirely and then, you know, we're back where we started. So, you know, be kind. I've, I, I, there's some bits in this video that I've had to like voice over and pause and let you know that I did something wrong. So, um, be gentle. I, uh, I'm trying. This is a free pattern. It's free for you to use. I always get comments in my previous vi videos where, um, I don't necessarily say that you can use it for for every like anything but you can you can use this for like selling at markets you can use this pattern um, for your Etsy shop you can use this pattern to sell your own um, end product please do not sell this pattern this pattern is free and always will be so I would like to keep it that way um, but you can sell the products that you make from this pattern the only thing is as I would appreciate the credit if you can if you post on social media I love seeing your work uh, so please tag me in in anything of mine that you make I love seeing them so and I do my best to make sure that I see every single post and I and I do my best to try and comment on every single post that I see. So please tag me. I love it. So hopefully I've captured everything that I need to capture. Of course, if you guys are confused about anything, um, I do my best to respond to comments. Um, you know, if I've missed something, uh, the pattern, of course, is in the description. Um, and I also do put it up on Ribbler as well. So depending on how you like it presented to you, it's it's in multiple spots. So you can go get the pattern there. But without further ado, let's get into the pattern. 
let's get into materials. So I am using Sweet Snuggles Light and this is in color silver and it is a super bulky size 6 yarn. Um, it's recommending an 8.0 millimeter hook but I am using a 6.0 millimeter hook instead. We always want to size down with Imagrumi and as long as you can like get the hook over it and it doesn't like slip out you're probably good but it's all up to preference if you want to use a bigger hook your piece will just end up a little bit bigger if you use a smaller hook your piece will end up a little bit smaller same thing with tension same thing with the yarn you can always use a size 4 yarn with a 3.0 millimeter hook or whatever the pattern will still turn out the same you'll just end up with a bigger or smaller version so then for our other little bits and bobs, we are going to need a tiny little bit of black yarn. I am using just a scrap piece of black size 3 acrylic yarn. And then I have 10 millimeter safety eyes. Actually, uh, recording Megan here, these are not 10 millimeter safety eyes. They are 12 millimeter safety eyes. Um, I'm just a little bit silly. Okay, so let's get back to it. I choose not to use them with their backings, but you can absolutely use their backings. I just find that they slip out and they make it a little bit awkward to put in. Um, and then we need some scissors, a stitch marker or more, like you can use multiple stitch markers if you have trouble keeping track of your, your stitches or rounds. And then a needle, like a darning needle or a yarn needle that is big enough for your yarn just because we're using some thick yarn. And then of course we're gonna need our lovely fluff stuffing. Um, it's just polyester fiber fill stuffing. And then a few more things that you need that I totally forgot to add in while I was filming at the beginning and now we are all the way at the end. But um, I just have some pins for sewing together and then some glue for putting in the safety eyes. So I always get asked, how much yarn do I need? I never know. I'm not good at this part. I mean, you could, I think the way that you do it, I've never researched it. So actually, I've never put any effort into figuring it out, <laughs> but I just have like no interest in figuring it out. But I think you have to like weigh it and then, I don't know, before and after, but I just like, I just do the thing. I don't know, but for this this is how much i have left after making an entire one so like you don't you don't even need like a full skein of yarn like i i have so much left after making one like a whole thing there's still like you could probably get two or you could get a, definitely two out of this but like three probably i don't know i'll maybe I'll let you know at the end maybe I'll forget who knows but you definitely don't need more than one this is a very small project so it's kind of like a stash buster I guess or you can use the small baby seal as your stash buster but you definitely don't need a ton of yarn so we are going to start by working on the odds and ends of this piece. So we're not making the main body first. We are actually going to start with the snout and then the arms and then we'll work on the body just so we can like sew it in along the way. A lot of people find that helpful instead of sewing it in at the end. However, I kind of like I kind of like to do it at the end because then I can like see how it all like fits together. I can put them in the right spots and stuff. But if that's not for you and you just want to like throw it all together um, as you crochet, I mean, that's fine. It's just not my preference. So let's start with the snout first and and then we'll go from there. So we are going to start by making a slip knot. So um, I mean, I, I really should like make some basic tutorials for like here's how i do a slip knot but i haven't done that yet because i i just haven't i don't know so the way that i do a slip knot is i wrap it around two fingers and hold it like this so the the end tail is sitting underneath where the yarn is coming from the ball of yarn and then i just kind of pinch it with my finger I like to use my hook, but you don't have to. You can just take your finger and go like this, but I like to use my hook instead. So the way that I do it, I go around my fingers, pinch, put the hook into that loop, and then pick up the loop from the back, 
fold that into the back and then just pull both and then you already have it on your hook and then you can just pull the yarn from the ball of yarn and then it's already on your hook you don't have to put it on your hook see i'm i'm saving you time the precious half seconds of putting the hook into the loop so after our stitch is or not our stitch our, our slip oh my god our slip knot is on our hook we are going to chain six so i'm not teaching you the stitches here so if you have to learn how to do a chain you can go ahead and do that one two three four five six so i don't know why i do this but when i do chains i always yarn over my hook but when i do the rest of the amigurumi I, I literally, I, I yarn under, so I have no idea why. I think it's just like force of habit, but you can yarn under. I just find it easier to yarn over for some reason. So from here, we are going to work back down the top of the chain. So with the fluffy yarn, it is a very difficult to see. And after me taking a little bit of a break, it is extremely difficult for me to see even though i'm familiar with crochet so just take your time and recognize those little like little bumps along the top here so we are essentially going to go down this top part and then back up the bottom part hopefully it'll make sense when i do it so we are going to work on shaping this to make it into a snout. So for the first stitch, which will be the second chain from the hook, we are gonna go into that top loop and we are going to single crochet. And then in the next stitch over, we are also going to single crochet. And I'm doing yarn under, if you can see. And then in the next one over, so this will be the third stitch that we did, we are going to increase. Remember, increasing is just two single crochets into one stitch. So we have two in one here. And then we are going to finish off by doing a single crochet and then another single crochet. So we will have done, like we will have worked into five stitches total. We did a chain of six, we didn't work into that first stitch because that won't work. It literally won't happen. You'll just undo your work. So we've got five stitches to work in. So we did a single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet. Now we're down here and all I want you to do is go like this. <laughs> so you are working from right to left. If you are left-handed, I am sorry. I don't know if you can mirror this video and do that, but I can't figure out left-handed and I haven't looked into it. I'm sure it's easy. I'm sure it's just a mirror, but um, someone can let me know if if you know, let me know in the in the comments if I just have to mirror it. I don't know. Anyways, so we're working right to left again and we are going to find the bumps down here. So we should have five, right? We worked into five up here and now we have to work five down here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. This little knobby bit is not a stitch. It's the, it's actually your slip knot. You want to work into like over here. One, two, three, four, five. And this weird loopy bit is your last one. So I'm going to just kind of take that slip knot and kind of pull it back and hold it with my finger back here so it's kind of out of the way i can like pull it down and then there is my stitch does that make sense so when we work around here we are just going to single crochet down this this row and that will give us with five single crochets so one two three, four, this one's kind of tricky to get into, and last one, this big loopy one, five. Alrighty, so you can see we've kind of got like this bean shape. I, I don't know, it's kind of like an oval, but it's like turns downward. All I'm gonna do is kind of pull up that loop there 
and I'm going to cut a little bit of yarn because we are going to use this yarn to sew this in. So I'm going to cut leaving enough for sewing in. I'm a little bit extra and I like to add a little bit, but if you want to conserve yarn, um, you can probably do it shorter than this. And then we are going to do an invisible, I think it's called an invisible bind off. I could be wrong, but we're going to take our yarn needle and I'm going to essentially just like cap this off because this looks a little bit like, ew, what is, it's like a C, like what is going on here? So I'm going to like finish it off and like make an invisible stitch. So we are going to go and find our first stitch that we made and it's like this little v here right and i'm gonna go under both loops and pull that yarn through so from where you're sitting away from you you want to go in this way right and then you're gonna go back and it's so hard to see with fluffy yarn i promise you it's easier with size four yarn but you're gonna go back and find this that last stitch that you made which is right here don't, don't do what I'm doing, I'm just showing you. But you're gonna find the back loop only of that stitch. So this is the front loop here, and this is the back loop. And we're gonna go down and underneath this yarn. Make sure this one's on top. And then pull through. And then you can see it kind of like makes another V. And this is not technically a stitch because there's nothing underneath it. It just kind of pulls it together and connects them. So now we have our little jelly bean shape and we can put this off to the side for sewing in later. So let's make the little nubbin arms. So these are gonna be pretty straightforward. They're pretty simple, um, but we will need two of them. So I've already made up one. You can see it's just like a little knobby, knobby piece. We'll take our, our yarn here and we're gonna make a slip knot again. So there is our slip knot. So, I also get a lot of questions about, hey, can I do a magic circle here? Yes, technically. However, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, when you're working with fluffy yarn, I have now, listen, I'm a magic circle kind of gal. However, with fluffy yarn, it just doesn't sit right when you use a magic circle. So I find that if you use the chain two and then single crochet and second chain from hook method, it turns out so much better. Just like you can use you can use the magic circle if you want, but with fluffy yarn, it um, it tends to like get pointy and get weird. So I would just use the chain two method. Um, so for this one, we are going to start with our chain two, and then in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to find that spot. I'm going to single crochet five into that same spot. One, two, three, four, oh, four, and five. So we can count back from our hook and see where that first stitch is because it's kind of difficult to see. You might think it's right here. I know that it's right here, but you can count back just to make sure. Or if you're really struggling, once you do that first single crochet, you can just go ahead and put that stitch marker right on it so you know where that is. So one, two, three, four, five. That's our fifth one. So this is gonna be our starting stitch here. And I am gonna go right in and put two stitches, so an increase. Two single crochets into one spot. I forgot to put my stitch marker on my last stitch, but I'm gonna do that right now. So this is the marker of my last stitch. If you wanna put it on your first stitch, you absolutely can. I always put it on my last stitch. Into the next stitch over, we are going to increase again. So single crochet two into one. And the next stitch over, we are going to increase. And we're just increasing all the way around, so five times. One, two, and then one, two, and then one more. One, two. So we had five single crochets when we made our little circle. 
and now we've increased it into every stitch so now we have 10 because each stitch got two so five times two equals 10 we have 10 all the way around you can go ahead and count if you would like but right now i am just going to go ahead and single crochet 10 so single crochet one into every single stitch all the way around so this will start to curve our piece upwards and make it more of a, a leggy kind of shape. So this is my last one. Should have 10 stitches at the end of this one as well because we didn't increase or decrease. There we go. So now we have a little like hat shape. If you have your starting yarn on the inside, like coming out of the inside here, perfect, great job. It happened for you naturally. However, if yours is looking like this, um, just go like this. This has like a little bit of a nicer texture to the stitches. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see too well with the fluffy yarn, but there are these like stitches that go horizontally, which indicates the wrong side of your piece. This is technically the right side when your stitches go vertically, right? You can see that these ones are more upwards and then that these ones are more like this. So, I mean, it's up to you, whichever one you like better, but this is technically the right side. It's just the terminology. It's not actually right or wrong. It's just, it's just how we call it. I don't know, but I'm gonna take the stitch marker out even though I already just put it right back on. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit of yarn for sewing in later. I don't know, is that about a foot? I'm so bad with measurements. That is, that is more than a foot, but I like to leave a little bit extra just in case I have to go back or add something or do something. And I'm just gonna tuck this in. So I would always recommend doing your little nubbins at the same time because sometimes when you do them on different days, uh, your tension's a little bit different. So I'm doing this one the day after this one, and they look a little bit different, just just slightly, but I think I'm gonna be able to get away with it. But if you are doing arms or, or legs or anything that's matching in pairs, do them the same day, right after each other. It'll just, it'll turn out better for you. So I had to change up my lighting situation uh, before I continued. It is raining here and very sad outside, so it's very dark. So if there is a little bit of a difference in shadows, um, sorry, that's just what it is. So we are going to be working on the main body now. So we are going to start with our chain two start. So slip knot, hook in, there we go, that's our slip knot and then chain two, there we go. So now we are gonna be working into that second loop and we are going to single crochet eight in the second chain from the hook. So right into here, we are going to single crochet eight. One, try not to twist it either. Two, oops, oops, three, Four, five, six, seven, and last one, eight. <clears throat> Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put my stitch marker on my last stitch here. And then we're gonna start working around in a circle. So I'm gonna find that first stitch and we are going to essentially increase in every stitch. So increase is two single crochets in one single crochet. So there's our first increase and we are gonna do that eight times. One, one increase in each stitch. So, because we had eight stitches to start with and we are putting two into each of the eight stitches, we're gonna double up 
and we'll make 16 stitches by the end of the round. go so we are going to move on to round two so for some reason i never count my starting like loop as a round so like the base never i don't know why i've never counted it as it just like makes sense to me that that's like your foundation chain and you don't really count your foundation chain so i don't count the starting foundation circle as a round so our first round is this one here which is the increase round and then our second round will be single crochet into one the first stitch and then increase into the next stitch over so that will be our pattern of two stitches and we're going to do single crochet and then increase and then single crochet and then increase and then single crochet and then increase so we're going to do this pattern of single crochet comma increase eight times around so i already did one this is number two single crochet increase single crochet increase and we're just going to do that all the way back to the beginning so we are adding on eight stitches to this round with our increases so we were at 16 before we started this round we are adding eight stitches and we should get 24 at the end of this round I think I messed up somewhere. Oh, maybe not. Sometimes it is so hard to see with the fluffy stitches. And they get all bunched together too, so <laughs> it's just even more difficult. I would never recommend a beginner start with fluffy yarn, but it's not impossible. It's just so hard to see the stitches. It's just a little bit, I don't know, more difficult. I find so that was the end of round two so round three will be single crochet two so single crochet single crochet and then we'll do an increase into the third stitch so it's a pattern of three stitches single crochet single crochet increase one two and then increase one two and then increase and we're going to do this eight times around total so we are adding on eight more stitches i don't know if you can see a pattern going on but we're just kind of adding eight stitches every single time every round here so single crochet single crochet and then increase We're just doing it all the way around. One more set here. One, two, and then increase into the last stitch. So we added eight stitches to this round, meaning that we would have 32 stitches at the end of the round. You can go ahead and count just to make sure that you've got it right. However, I find that usually if I end up with the correct stitch of the increase at the end, I'm usually spot on, but we can go ahead and count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
So from here, we are on round four and rounds four through 10 are gonna be just straight single crochet. So we're just gonna be doing one stitch over and over and over and over and over again for seven rounds. So round four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven rounds, we are going to do straight single crochet. So it's just one single crochet and each stitch all the way around back to your stitch marker. So 32 stitches each time for seven rounds total. So I'm gonna whip ahead and then I'll meet you back at the end of round 10. Okay, so here we are after doing the seven rounds. So I like to just make sure that I actually have seven rounds by counting back because um, I don't mark it down anymore. I just kind of remember where I am based on what it looks like, but I'll teach you how to check. So this is the last stitch of your round. And we know that when we were increasing, the last stitch of our round, I don't know if you remember, but it was an increase. So we can look back at each last stitch of the round and they kind of go and veer off towards the left, you can see. So this is the last stitch of our round here and then that's the last stitch and then that's the last stitch, last stitch, last stitch, last stitch. And then you're like, okay, this one looks different. I don't know if you can tell, but this one looks different. It's got like two little chunky bits coming out of it. And this is our increase. Our last stitch was an increase. This was the last stitch of our increase rounds. So we can count up from our increase round, seven rounds, just to make sure that we've got it right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm counting each of those stitches. So I've got my seven rounds taken care of here. And this is where we're gonna start increasing. Sorry, not increasing. This is where we're gonna start decreasing because we wanna have that, that taper of a tail. So we need to slowly decrease. So if we decreased in the same way that we increased, we'd have a really sharp, so it would essentially just look like this, in which we just have a really sharp um, decrease. And we don't want that. We want like a nice long tail. So we are gonna slowly decrease. And we are going to work on round 11 now. And round 11 will be the start of our decrease round. And it will go a little something like single crochet six and then decrease. And we're gonna invisible decrease for our decreases. So single crochet six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then we're going to invisible decrease into these next two stitches and bring them together so to invisible decrease we are going to take the front loops only of the next two stitches here so it looks like that we're going to yarn under pull up a loop yarn under pull through both so it's going to look a little something like that so we're gonna do this combination that makes up eight stitches te technically. So we had the single crochet six and then we single and then we crocheted the two together essentially. We didn't do a single crochet two together, we did an invisible decrease, but that makes up a combination of eight stitches. So if our math is correct, we should do that four times all the way around and then we'll decrease by four. For this round so we'll do another single crochet six one two three four five six and then we are going to invisible decrease those next two stitches so one two like that yarn under because i'm yarning under pull up a loop yarn under pull through two and again, we're gonna do single crochet six, one, two, oops, I lost track of that one. That's the two, three, four, five, and six. And then we are going to invisible decrease the next two together. And then last time, we're gonna single crochet six, one, two, three, four, 
five and six. And then if we did it correctly, our last two stitches should make up the remaining invisible decrease. Okay, so we had 32 stitches. We decreased by four, so now we should have 28 stitches. Okay, so we just finished up round 11, and for round 12 and 13, we are just gonna straight single crochet all the way around. So at the end of this round, we had 28 stitches, so we are going to single crochet 28 for two rounds. So that will be round 12 and 13. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then come right back. Okay, so here I am at the end of round 13. I've just done my two rounds of single crochet. So you can see this is my last decrease. It looks a little bit funky. It's like a weird kind of pattern here. And then I've done one, two rounds of straight single crochet. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want it to taper very, 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 very slowly. So even though we are already decreasing, our decrease rounds are are like half of what they should be. Um, we are also trying to taper it slower by giving it a little bit more distance to travel over. So it's not just gonna go whomp. It's just gonna go very slowly all the way down. So for round 14, round 14, right? Yeah, for round 14, remember how on round 11 we did uh, single crochet six and then decrease? We're gonna be following this pattern of like getting smaller and smaller. So round 11 was single crochet six decrease. And then now for this decrease round, we're gonna do single crochet five decrease. And we're gonna follow this patterning of like going one step down. So single crochet six, single crochet five, single crochet four, single crochet three, single crochet two, like all the way down. We're gonna change it up a little bit later, but just to give you like a heads up of like what we're doing so it kind of makes sense and I'm not just throwing numbers at you. So for round 14, we're gonna do the single crochet five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to invisible decrease. So invisible decrease, pick up the front loops only of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. And then we're gonna do that combination of single crochet five and then decrease or invisible decrease uh, four times all the way around. So we'll be decreasing by four. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then invisible decrease. So that's our second set. One, two, three, four, five, and then invisible decrease. And last set here, this is our fourth set. One, two, three, four, and five. And then our last invisible decrease. Boink, boink. Okay, so I think I mentioned this before, but you can count after every round, but usually if you end up on the correct stitch, you're probably fine. If you don't, then you've probably done something wrong. But at the end of this round, you should have 24 stitches because we had 28, we decreased by four, now we have 24 stitches. And now we're gonna do the same thing of doing two rounds of straight single crochet all the way around, so 24 stitches for two rounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I will be right back. Okay, so here I am at the end of round 16. So 15 and 16 were just straight single crochet, 24 stitches around. Um, and you can see that it's like slowly starting to taper. It's like at a, a wider base here and then tapering off here. So I wanna stop here and mention that if you want to sew your pieces on as you go and use the backings for your your eyeballs now is a good time to do that i would just recommend that you kind of stuff a little bit just to you know see how it's gonna fit and then place your eyes in between your nose piece um 
just to see where everything is going to fit and go. It's easier, so you can do this if you want to use the backings. However, if you don't care about the backings, backings are pretty unsafe anyways, in my opinion. I don't think they're entirely child safe, but I would recommend especially as a beginner that you just glue in your eyes which is what i do now anyways i'm not a beginner i just don't like to use the backings i find it so much easier and i can place the eyes better at the end once everything is stuffed but right now you can stop here and put your eyeballs in and put your nose on um, and put your your limbs on um, if you so choose I'm not going to, but you can skip ahead to where I assemble everything to see where everything goes. I'm going to leave it for now so that I can like make sure that I'm putting it in the right spot once everything is all together. Just because we're going to add the flippers at the end here and I want to make sure that I have it positioned the correct way. It's hard to do it once the flippers are are not in yet. So highly recommend that you wait till the end. Don't use the backings, just super glue them in and you'll be fine. It'll it'll be a-okay. I you're going to pick it out anyways even if they do have the backings. They're not like the backings are not large. They'll fall out of here pretty easily. So I like to glue them in. Just trust me. <laughs> okay? But you do you. We are going to move on after that little spiel. We're going to move on to round 17, I guess. We are going to continue on with our decreases. Like I said, we're gonna be moving on to single crochet four and then decrease. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then decrease invisible decrease sorry into these two stitches okay one two three four and then we are going to invisible decrease these two stitches together oh there we go and again this is our third set one two three, four, and then again, we are going to invisible decrease. And then last set, one, two, three, and four, and then invisible decrease the remaining two stitches together. There we go. Okay, so we are slowly getting smaller and smaller. So this is, we had 24 stitches, we decreased by four. So now we should have 20 stitches all the way around. So round 18 is going to be straight single crochet. We are not doing the two rounds of straight single crochet anymore. We're just going to single crochet 20 on round 18, which I will just kind of breeze through, quickly run around. There we go. So round 18 is done. And round 19 will be another increase round. So we had 20 stitches at the end of this round. And now our set is going to be single crochet three and then invisible decrease. So we'll have, we'll be working in a set of like five stitches. So single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, and then invisible decrease the two together. So one, two, three, four, five, set of five. So let's do single crochet one, single crochet the two, single crochet the third, and then invisible decrease the next two together. And again, one, two, three, and then invisible decrease the next two together. So we're doing a set of four again. Sorry, we're doing I don't know how to how to say that. So we, we're doing, okay, you know what, just ignore that. <laughs> I'm just trying to say we're doing it four times around. So one, two, three, and then invisible decrease. And then one, two, 
three. And then invisible decrease. Those last two together. So in this round, we decreased by four. We had 20 decrease. Oh, this one's kind of blech. We're just going to leave that. So we had 20 and then we decreased by four. So we should have 16 at the end of this round. So for round 20, we are just going to single crochet all the stitches around. So 16 stitches. I'm going to whip right through the last and 16th single crochet. Oh, I almost lost my stitch. Okay. So round 20 is done and round 21, we are going to decrease again. Uh, but actually let's take a little break here. Oh, my, my yarn's getting a little bit funky. Look at that. That might be a problem. We'll just ignore it until it actually becomes a problem. So we're going to stop here and just because like our opening is getting a little bit smaller with our weird taper, we are going to stuff it and we're going to stuff this quite well. So I'm just going to start stuffing it and trying to push it all the way to the back. You can, of course, stop at any time and stuff this as long as you can get the stuffing in. Um, I just like to make sure that the head of this is nice and round. So now seems like a very good place to stop. And we're going to still stuff more. Um, this is just preliminary stuffing. It's always good to give them a little mush along the way. Okay. I think that's good for now. I want them to be a little bit soft and squishy. So, you know, I'll, hmm, they might be able to do with a little bit more, um, but I'm gonna leave it quite unstuffed here because we don't want our stuffing to get in the way of our stitches. So let's pause stuffing for now. And we are going to decrease again. So moving on to round 21, we are going to single crochet two. Okay, that little peaks wasn't a problem, which is great. So single crochet two, and then we are going to invisible decrease. So we're gonna be working over a set of four stitches. So single crochet, single crochet, oops, single crochet, single crochet, and then invisible decrease the two together. And we're gonna do this four times. One, two, and then invisible decrease. One, oops, one, two, and invisible decrease. One, two, and invisible decrease those last two together. So we had, what did we have? We had 16 stitches and then we decreased by four. So we should have 12 at the end of that round. So now for the next round, um, we're on round 22. We are going to single crochet all 12 stitches. So we'll have 12 again at the end of the round. Okay, last stitch, right. Okay, so now you can see that we are really tapering off here. So we did like a slow taper up here and now we're like really narrowing out, um, which is great. Okay, stitch marker back on, hook back in. So now we are going to do our last little bit here. I'm going to do another round of decreasing. So we are going to single crochet and then invisible decrease. So we're working over a set of three stitches and decreasing by four. Single crochet and then invisible decrease. Two together there. Single crochet, 
and then invisible decrease and then last one single crochet and then invisible decrease okie doke right now i'm gonna pull out the hook put my stitch marker back on we should have eight stitches at the end of this round and we are going to continue stuffing this area that is unstuffed So I think that's all I need there. And we are, th I think we are on round 24 now and we are going to single crochet around. Starts getting a little bit weird here cause everything's like so long. <laughs> so just hard to maneuver, especially when I'm trying to show you. So single crochet, eight stitches all the way back to your stitch marker. Okay. And then, so that was eight stitches. And then for round 25, our last round, we are going to decrease in every set of two. So every time we do a stitch, it's gonna be an invisible decrease. One, two, there should be four of them. It's kind of hard to, kind of hard to see at this point. So this is two, And then we got three. Almost. And last one, these last two remaining stitches here. So difficult to see. Four, 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 one, two. Throw those together. Okay. That's it. You have tapered off your piece. I'll give my tail a little squish to make sure that all of the stuffing has gotten all the way to the end. If you find that it's like not really stuffed at all, you can um, use the back of your crochet hook or a smaller crochet hook to try and like wedge some more. I think I need to wedge some more into the back of mine. <laughs> I don't know why I use a crochet hook I don't I really don't know but I kind of just like fold it over on top of itself and then just try and jam it in there sorry okay done so we have our four remaining stitches here if you want to mark them you definitely can so this will be our first stitch and then this one would be our second one and then this one would be our third one and then the one attached to that that loop is the fourth one so they're a little hard to see if you want you can just mark them with your your stitch markers just get four of them and then you know call it a day so from here we are going to chain three so one two and three so we'll have um, these three bumps here so now we are going to work our way back down this chain and we're going to start with a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then a half double crochet in the next one over so the half double crochet is yarning over your hook or under your hook and then into the stitch yarn under or over yarn under and then pull through all three so that is your half double crochet so now we are gonna work back into our base of four stitches and I'm gonna go into the first stitch and out the third stitch. I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop and do like a single crochet here. So it'll look like that. And now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with this flipper over on the other side. I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then in the third chain from the hook I'm going to half double crochet so yarn under or over so I'm going under and then into this stitch yarn under pull up a loop there should be three on your hook now yarn under pull through all three 
And now I'm going to go back into that that stitch that like we went through like one and three. I'm going to go back into there and do a slip stitch. <sighs> it's not... <laughs> I don't know if people would call that technically correct, but it works. Like, I, I can't complain. How am I supposed to complain about that? It, it looks like a flippers. It looks like a little heart. So, after we did that, I'm just going to pull up the loop a little bit. And then we are going to trim, just leaving a little bit of yarn, just for, like, knotting off. And, sorry, you can't see. I'm <laughs> zoomed in. I keep forgetting. So, just for knotting off. Knotting? Knotting? Knotting off? So I'm gonna take my little tapestry needle here, throw that through, and then I'm gonna just kind of, I don't think it really matters, honestly, it all kind of blends in. I'm just gonna go and find a stitch close by and make a little knot. That's it. And then I'm just gonna push it through the piece. So I'm going into a spot nearby where that knot is and then coming out literally a random spot. <laughs> just quite a distance away just so it um, is secure and then we trim the excess. All right, so this is why I say to wait until the end to put in your details because if you put in your details earlier, sorry, this is bugging me. There's like something wrong with this yarn. I'm gonna just try and stuff it in. I don't like it. So if you were to put in your eyes too early and put everything in too early, you might end up with your eyes this way, but your tail is now a different way, which you can make shift, like you can make it work by kind of turning it. But I like to make sure that everything is straight so I will add everything in at the end so we are working on assembly now okay so we have all of our bits and bobs here I have where's my oh my god I almost lost my yarn needle um so we have our base kind of looks like a fish I guess they kind of look fishy but here's our base and then I'm going to kind of just make sure that this tail is nice and straight and then tilt it upwards. It kind of looks like a shrimp, actually. We're going to just kind of tilt the body upwards and I'm going to just start by putting in the eyes in like kind of the same area. So I'm going to kind of count outwards. So this is my my ring here and then it starts to spiral right so the ring and then i go one two out the ring one two out and let's just see if that looks okay ish kind of looks a little bit off center but now we are gonna work on where this goes i want the eyes to be as close to the snout as possible so let's move where everything goes now so I'm gonna bring these in one each and up a little bit. So this is just all kind of, a little bit of just mushing around until you get it to something that you like. So I might move things up a little bit. So now I have one, two, three, four, maybe four four stitches in between these eyes and then I'm gonna see how this looks so we're gonna kind of shape it into a downturn we're gonna make it make it happen and then I'm gonna take some pins and just kind of plop them in and see if that's what I like Mm hmm I think that's okay there. So I want to make sure that these stitches, when I sew them in, create a ridge here. And then these stitches are not, do not have a ridge. And so I'm going to make sure that I am in the center of my piece here. I'm going to remove the eyeballs for now. And we are going to put in our needle. 
And to do that, to have that ridge, I'm going to just be sewing down these back loops only of this top area and then sewing down both loops of the bottom area. So going into the next or let's go into the body first and then come out just next door over here. I'm going to go into the back loop only of that next stitch over. And then I'm going to kind of follow the the stitches along with my snout. So this is very similar to the baby seal as well, in which we're giving it a little bit more of a ridge here and then no ridge at the bottom. Oops, I pulled out a pulled out a little bit of a pin. So I move my piece all around when I do this. I just can't help it. But I'm going into just these back loops so you can see that there's like this this little ridge that forms. And I'm kind of following those stitches as they curve. I'm going to just pull out my little pins so I can tuck my yarn tail underneath here just to give it some volume. If you don't have too much of a tail, you can add some stuffing, but I find just the tail enough. And then going all the way around. One more down here. And And now I'm going to start going into both loops. And I'm going to try and make sure that I shape it in this kind of walrusy like it's like a like a jelly bean shape. So I'm going to try and like pin this stitch, this middle stitch up a little bit higher. So I'm shaping it as I'm sewing it down. So these, these pieces come down lower and then I'm going to put my, my needle in higher, higher up on the face, coming out up here to stitch in this one here and then go back lower to stitch in the rest. It is so hard to show you guys this part. bit lower here and then our last stitch right here and we are going to finally knot this bad boy off so I'm gonna go in out to the side and then I'm gonna find a random stitch close by make that loop and knot this guy off okay and then I will go in and out. I'm getting in a lot of a lot of fluffs. And then if you want to make sure before you completely cut your tail that you are good to go, and you can cut that tail off. So you can use all of these bits and bobs for scrap later. And we are going to make sure that these eyes fit well. So if you've done it hopefully right it should fit nicely and if not you know your guy just looks a little bit wonky and that's fine too so you can see mine is a little bit off here so maybe i started a little bit too close but give him a squish give him a mush around and it usually just works out fine because i'll just kind of move things around and and then things just things just kind of work out so Let's get those guys in, in a little bit. I'm gonna take them out. That was just to check. And we are gonna take our black yarn and put in our snoot because we know how this is gonna work. You can almost see the indents that I put the eyes in. So I'm just gonna, I I don't know. I tend not to, to bother too much with um, tying these off, but because it doesn't really, 
I don't know. If it's gonna be like handled a lot, maybe you wanna tie it together, but I find just with a little loop around, it, uh, it, it works. So I'm just gonna try and find the, the center. Sometimes you have to go a little, a little further out. Try not to go too low down either. But that looks, that looks good right about there. Just for a little line for the snooch. So if you wanted to tie it off, you'd come out the same direction, do a knot, tie it tight, and then trim the tails and then stuff them in. But I don't really mind too much. This is not gonna be manhandled. It's not really going anywhere. So we'll just leave it in there. Or you can even put a little dab of glue that, would, that might work too, like some clear glue. So now our nose is in, so let's work on positioning for our feet. So these little, these little knobbies are just going to essentially support on either side. It's hard for me to show you when it's on the ground, but you want to check it on the ground to make sure that these little knobbies just kind of support, support our guy up. So the first iteration that I did of this, had a little bit longer of feet. They look like little, I don't know, they look almost a little more flippery, but these ones, I wanted them to be a little bit more knobby. I don't know, I just kind of liked the look of the, the rounder feet. And you can kind of, when you sew them in and stuff them along the way, it kind of just, it, length, it lengthens them as well. But what I am gonna try and do when I sew these in is I am going to try and put the yarn tail at the back if that makes sense so we're gonna have the yarn tail pointing towards the actual tail just because this side is actually a little bit higher than this side just barely so it'll help position those feet a little bit better to like position your little seal upwards so i'm gonna kind of just pick a spot that you know our little our little seal feels supported underneath him or her or them, and I am going to just work on sewing them in. If you want, you can pin them, pin them in. I'm gonna pin them in, leaving a little bit of give so I can stuff a little bit. I think that's probably good. So we are just going to go along and sewing down to the stitch close by, nearby to the actual piece. Try not to stretch your, your little nubbin feet too much because then that will just make it flat. Just, you know, wherever it lands, go to a stitch on the body that's like nearby. Don't, don't, make, him, don't make him stretch his legs. It's not ready yet. This isn't yoga. We're just going nearby so I'm just sewing down every stitch on that leg to the piece I'm gonna take out my pins So now I only have, uh, there's probably three stitches remaining here. I am going to take a little bit of stuffing and stuff just a touch in here. Like literally that much, just to give it some structure. If you don't want to, you really don't have to. Or if you ran out, like the, the little tidbits of, of yarn that you cut off also work. So. Just, just give it a little bit of stuffing. Even like the, the starting yarn tail actually helps too. Okay, and then I think there's just this last one here. So this last piece in and I'm gonna give it a little loop, a knot, and then I'm going to hide the yarn tail through the piece. I tend not to cut at this point just in case I need to move my nubbin 
when I put on the other one, sometimes I realize that I didn't put it in the right place. And if I cut it, then it makes it just harder to re-sew it in. But I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I, that I place these correctly. So we're gonna pin these ones and I'm gonna go ahead and sew this one in and then I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so I have my nubbins on. I'm going to trim my excess and we are so close. Just taking out those little bits cleaning them up and then we're gonna take our fabric glue or crazy glue or whatever kind of like glue you want to use and I'm gonna put the eyes in again hopefully hopefully in a place that makes sense there we go sometimes I have to move them around just to make sure I've got it in the right place um recording me again so yeah this was not actually the right place and i ended up moving these again and um you know just just put it wherever you think looks cute because honestly it's all up to personal opinion anyways but yeah i put them in the wrong spot here it even looks <laughs> looks silly when i'm watching it back but uh yeah we've we've had a lot of editing megan moments so uh apologies about that one it looks like this little bit that's like popping out at me here. Beep, beep. Give everything like a good squish. Um, I just have like fabric fusion. Honestly, fabric glue works great. I don't know, just get some sort of clear, clear kind of glue. I don't know if like, you know, craft glue works, but I kind of just leave these guys upside down. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit on there. So it's, it's pouring out because I leave it upside down. A little bit on the spot that the eye goes and I just push in. See, I'm like, ugh, gotta work fast. So put a little dab on the hole that it goes into and then I put a little dab on the actual safety eye. That is not a safety eye anymore. And then hopefully you put it in the correct spot and push that bad boy in. And now the reason why I asked you to put in the safety eyes last is because you have to let it dry. You have to let this little cutie dry before you do too much of anything with him. I just move the eyeballs down and I prefer it there. I don't know I don't know why I put them up a little too high it just wasn't working for me and, and I switched it there's a little bit of glue sitting there but I switched it up and I think I like the eyes there better so all is not lost <laughs> if you put it in the wrong spot just make it work so just as reference I just wanted to show you how much I had left at the end so like I feel like you could even get two more out of these. I think you could get four out of this ball of yarn. I mean, depending on how tightly you're crocheting or, you know, the size of your hook. But like, I don't think you could get two more out of these. You can get a total of four out of this. But, uh, yeah, there's still quite a bit left. Like, a lot, a lot left. So you should not need more than one for this project you'll get you'll get quite a few out of just the one okay so if you are here in this part of the video uh hopefully you finished and made your little seal um if you want to go ahead and make a little baby seal or if you've already made this guy and are now here for this pattern thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed this pattern um i am working on some things in the background i have just been a big old slow poke with getting back on track and getting my crow joe back um but i do have uh intentions of uploading more it's just i'm a work in progress and just like we all are you know we got ups and downs so um i'm doing my best and i hope i hope that you guys whoa I hope that you guys are um, okay with joining me on this journey. Um, you know, I 
I know that a lot of people are here just for their free patterns and that's totally fine. Um, I am looking into doing some more stuff about like Q and A's, my plants that, you know, some have, as I was trying to take care of myself more, I took care of my plants less. So some of them, some of you may die, but that is the sacrifice I am willing to make. So anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.